Hi, I'm Nella Donato, artist and designer, and this is a very special sketchbook tour. I've used this sketchbook since 2009, and it's 2023 as I'm recording this, so me and this sketchbook have been on quite a journey together. From my very first watercolor landscapes to various mixed media stuff that I'm doing right now. Although it took me so long to complete it, I'm really fond of this sketchbook because some of my favorite drawings are inside. This is a very long video where I provide explanations about techniques I used, what inspired me to make a particular drawing, but if you'd rather see a quick six minute page flip with no commentary, the link for that version is in the description. Now, let's check out what's in this sketchbook. The first drawing in this sketchbook is from 2009. This is a little uh, boat scene from life using fine liners. And the following page is from 2010. A little room scene from my first adult apartment where I lived with a roommate. Uh, this is a dip pen and India ink. And this page here is from 2012, so we're skipping two years. And this is also from life a famous landmark in my hot hometown uh, with fine liner and water soluble pencils. Not the great, my great technique with water soluble pencils. So it's, you can see, you know, how things progress over their years. Uh, but the point was I was skipping a lot of the years uh, because I was really intimidated by the sketchbook. I didn't want to waste it on bad drawings. So, but sometimes I would force myself to do something to get like to make use of it and this is from 2012 a watercolor study also from life a little statue in my hometown and this one it says uh, September 2020 so uh, this is ink tense pencils also a little bit kind of uh, reference from life and what I was doing in this sketchbook is because what happens here is that pages rub together because this is a spiral bound sketchbook. So there's a bit of a transfer from one page onto the next. And then I started using only the right page, the, the right hand uh, side of the spread. And I would be skipping these left hand pages. But then when I came back many years later, I was filling in these pages because I don't like to leave pages blank. So you'll see there's a pattern here. Uh, this says two, uh, 2013. Uh, this is referenced from a personal photo of mine of a very old uh, city ruins. And I added this color, the watercolor pencil or intense pencil later on, but I kind of wish I didn't. I kind of wish I used something else because uh, it didn't dil it didn't dissolve completely. So I don't really like this um, strikey texture. I would prefer something more uniform. And the main drawing is fine liner and uh, India ink wash, so diluted India ink. And this here is 2021, uh, also referenced from a personal photo. Uh, I was kind of trying to make a really, really quick vignette and to get the colors very saturated. And as you can see, you know, there's quite a bit of a jump from what this <laughs> drawing looks like. Uh, you know, okay, the statue itself is fine, but this foliage, the, the wall in the back, the colors are very dull. There's very little atmosphere and it's, it's just a very boring drawing. And here, although it's very quick, uh, it kind of has more character. It has, uh, the colors are brighter. So I, I've improved my watercolor technique quite a bit over the years. So this is from 2023, uh, earlier this year. Now this drawing does have some anatomical errors, but whatever. So this is a watercolor and brush pen. And this is referenced by a photo for a project that never came to fruition, whatever. So here I just used this side for little doodles and this is a thumbnail sketch for the drawing you just saw earlier. And there are some thumbnail sketches for a drawing that we're gonna 
see later on. And this was a part of my month of fairies project from 2014. I have an entire other sketchbook, a very small one, where I did the majority of that project. So essentially I was drawing a fairy every day and there was a couple where I was drawing a little larger format. So this one is uh, inspired by a nine-tailed fox spirit from Japanese and Korean mythology. And here again, uh, a little vignette from uh, 2022 using watercolor. I was basically testing a new uh, brush, a dagger brush. So although the colors are very pale, there's a lot more texture and it's kind of more um, loose or it, it has been, it's not as stiff basically. Whereas here, uh, this is from 2016 and I don't know if this is stuck here permanently or what. Uh, this is a, also watercolor study from life. And unfortunately, you know, the colors are very pale. Uh, the details are very stiff. It's like, it's a fine drawing, but it's a very boring drawing, very boring watercolor study. And that's how most of my studies were at the time. Uh, now this one is from 2021 using water soluble pastels. And this is from 2016, also watercolor, also from life, uh, a scene on a lake. And I like the colors a bit better here, although I think they would, I would prefer if they were more vibrant. And there's a lot of hard edges here uh, because this is cold, um, this is hot press paper. So you do tend to have a lot of these uh, very, very crisp edges, even where you don't really want them. Uh, but at least it's a little bit darker <laughs> than my other watercolor drawings from that time. Uh, now this here is an unfinished drawing. I was starting from a, referencing a photo using some masking fluid, but I just gave up. I just didn't want to deal with that. And here, I don't remember what was on the uh, underneath. There was something else here, uh, but then I covered it with these little spiral doodles and a little gouache and a little white gel pen. Now here, uh, there's some thumbnail sketches. Now I did this one. It's coming up later in the notebook in, in this sketchbook. And these ones I haven't done yet. We'll see. Maybe I do. And this is from 2016. Uh, it's called noise sensitivity. I was using a fine liner, brush pen, and watercolors, specifically two, like a kind of uh, crimson red and Prussian blue. And I really like these two colors in general, and I really like them together. So here again, lots of these little thumbnail ideas. So uh, this one I actually did do in this sketchbook, and this one I also did in this sketchbook. And this one is from 2016. Actually, that was the day after I drew the one before. Uh, the background is brush pen ink and a little bit of watercolor here and a bit, bit of fine liner for the details. And I was going for a very minimalist look. I wanted to achieve like as much as I can by using very little details, very little um, kind of modeling of, of the figure, just more like a silhouette. Now here, lots of doodles from uh, to May, 2023. And this is a start of a series that you can see coming up in the following pages, where I started with a whole page using color ink. So these color inks, they come in bottles and they mix and blend on paper and the colors are very vibrant. Uh, unlike watercolor, which tends to come a lot very washed out, these colors are straight from the bottle. They are super vibrant. And so what I did, uh, so you can see here how that looks because I didn't do any blacking out. Here I was, I drew these, uh, the, the butterfly and a dragonfly and outlined them. And then I covered everything else uh, with black ink. And then I did some doodling over it with a white marker and just added a bit of detail here with a white marker. So you can 
only see the colors from underneath uh, on the feathers, um, on the, uh, what's it called, the wings. Oh gosh, <laughs> not the feathers, but the wings. And here, the same thing going on, except without the black, just a full page uh, with color ink. And there's a little bit of, you know, water blending going on. Very, 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 very fun effect. And just the details of this little mandalas and the dragonfly using a white marker. I think it was some kind of a pilot marker. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. So this is also probably 2016. And here are some thumbnail sketches. I did this in this sketchbook. I did this on a separate piece of paper. And the other ones I haven't done anywhere yet. So they're waiting for some other time. Uh, and here's the more thumbnail sketches. I haven't actually done any of them yet as a complete artwork. And this is the same continuation from the from the same series. So ink, color ink at the bottom, and then brush pen off the top. This is probably my favorite from the series um, because it has a bit of lettering. And I don't know if there was some glare maybe from the light, but this is what it looks like with no glare. Uh, and then here we have some more um, thumbnails. So I did this one, I did this one, I did this one in the sketchbook, so you're going to see them. And this is one of my favorites from this sketchbook. And it started off the same as the previous pages. There was a bit of a ink going on, but I didn't like it. I didn't want to use it for that anymore. So I covered the whole page with gesso and used some watercolor to get this background and the effect is pretty interesting. I did not intend for this to happen, but this is usually what happens with watercolor over gesso. You do get some of these hard edges, especially if you have very, very strong pigmentation, then you're going to have very, very strong parts uh, where the pigment lands. And the rest I did with brush pen and water soluble pastels. So this was 2020. And I was just getting into water soluble pastels seriously because although I had a couple over the years, I didn't really know how to use them. I was trying to use them like watercolor pencils, which I think is a mistake because they can do so much more when you use them as actual crayons or pastels. So with layering and blending without using water, you can get this very, very beautiful textures that nothing else can do. And they look very painterly, like you would get with gouache or with acrylic paint. And I was so, like, I didn't know <laughs> this is what's going to happen. I was just t trying things out. And I was so pleased with how this turned out that I started using water-soluble pencils, like, all the time. And I have a couple more uh, water-soluble pencil uh, pastel drawings in this sketchbook, but that was, like, a discovery. And if you don't know, uh, this is actually fan art. So this is... Um, a character from the Dark Crystal series and movie, one of my favorite movies of all time. And so I really like the aesthetic of that. I don't often go draw fan art, but there's a couple of fan art pieces in this that are still coming up. Uh, so this is 2023. Uh, this year I got an anatomically correct skull model. So I've did a lot of these studies. These are kind of tiny, quick studies using a gray and black brush pen. Uh, some of the brush pen is water soluble, some of it is permanent. So here I did you blend a bit. And this is, I think the last, yeah, mm, yeah, this is the last from that series, which I covered the whole page with ink, but I started hating that. This page is really dark, so I didn't really know what, what to do with it anymore. I was kind of uh, over it. And so I just drew this little ghostly lady and call it a day. So this is 2019. It took me a long time to use up all of these pages. So these two pages don't have anything to do with each other. So this one, I don't have a date, but it's probably also around 2020, probably. This is 2023. So just a lot of skull doodles with um, negative space painted with uh, red and magenta and orange watercolor. Uh, one of my favorite <laughs> warm watercolor paints is from Van Gogh, the, the Pyrrhal Orange. Very, very strong, intense, beautiful sunset color. And this is uh, using some watercolors and then this is all 
uh, the bold lines were made using masking fluid and the thin lines are made using either gel pen or some kind of marker. And these grasses were also using uh, water soluble pen uh, pastels. I really don't like that. I wish I didn't do that, but you know, you try things out and you learn. Uh, the background is started with watercolor, but then I added more water soluble pen uh, pastel to kind of make it stronger. Okay, so these two are also using water soluble pastels. Uh, this is uh, black gesso at the bottom. And it, this is accidentally turned over. I forgot which side of the page I was holding uh, my spiral like folded like this. So I forgot which, which way is up. So this is from 2020. I'm not sure if there's any gesso in the background. I think not. So I was using a reference to kind of these kind of land shapes, but then I went totally, uh, you know, surrealist with the textures. I wanted to make this very kind of creepy, kind of meaty looking. Um, when I think about it, it kind of looks like the upside down, but I think, uh, I'm not sure if I, if I actually watched the series at that time. I'm not sure what Stranger Things came out first. And this is actually the right side. I used a reference for this. And so this is a really interesting experiment, how to use a reference, but come up with something completely different. Uh, this, I used a photo reference for both of these. So this is in Ljubljana, Slovenia, a very famous dragon statue using watercolor and brush pen. And I really like it. So this is 2021. I was just doodling these little rectangles and then covering them with gel pen and some metallic watercolor paint. So I'm not sure if you can see all the shine. Uh, these are all Van Gogh watercolor metallic paints, uh, metallic and something they call, um, not iridescent, but um, interference colors. So this is kind of air interference purple. This is also sketched from life, a little beach scene uh, using fountain pen and watercolor and water soluble pastels. And now this, I used a photo reference for also my, my personal photo from a, a mountain biking trip. I really love this, this little scene. Uh, this is an old railway bridge and with some foliage. And I was trying out, I, I'm really constantly trying out different styles, how to draw a scenery, how to draw landsp landscapes in a way that's not boring. So I first, I believe I, I painted this first with watercolor and then actually drew these little details over it. I think so. I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember. And the gray shadows uh, are with a brush pen and the black is also with a brush pen. And this I drew using water soluble pastels. I think this is entirely water soluble pastels. I'm not sure. Maybe there's a bit of watercolor, but from what I can see, a lot of it is, is water soluble pastel, lots of drippy effects. So that's also something I started doing in this sketchbook, a lot of drippy. Oh, here's more drippy effects. So this is also one of my favorites from this sketchbook. Uh, the black details are brush pen, the white details are gel pen, and this is watercolor in the background, and this is ink tense pencil for the hair and the face shadows. So I really like this one. Now this are, these are more skull studies with watercolor and colored pencils, random tree doodles. And this is uh, just a surreal eye inspired by jewelry and rose windows. So I don't know if I'll ever do something like this maybe, but it was just um, an experiment in something more graphic. Now these are some thumbnails for drawings that are coming up later in the sketchbook. And this entire drawing is made by different tools using Prussian blue. So there's Prussian blue pe pencil, there's Prussian blue watercolor, and I used a bit of white pastel for the resist. So this is actual pastel, not, not water soluble. So I'm calling this 
artichoke spirit. So it's like a fairy that is connected to or coming from the plant of artichoke. So I often draw these little spirits uh, inspired by mushrooms, by different plants. And oh, there's another one coming up that is also inspired by plants. So that's kind of my thing, drawing fairies uh, that are connected to the plant world. Uh, now this, I don't know when I actually drew this little sketch, but it could be something like 2006, 2007, maybe 2008. I can't remember. It's a really quick doodle, but I found it in my stash of old, old, old doodles. And so I decided to recreate it in 2022. And I actually think it's missing a lot of that. I don't know, the, the energy of the first one. This one is a little more elaborate, very detailed, but also very stiff. So I kind of still like this one better. <laughs> Maybe I'll try to recreate it again, uh, trying to go for the same spirit of that drawing. Because this one, mm, I don't know. Uh, this is fan pen with diamine ink. I think it's called Oxblood. And the other one is uh, fan pen. Uh, so this here is a little, kind of more sci-fi inspired drawing. Uh, it started off like a really loose pencil doodle in another sketchbook where I was just basically just doodling without really thinking a lot. And the shape was really interesting. And so I thought, oh, really, I want to do this as a kind of more detailed drawing. And so this is using uh, brush pens and fountain pen and probably a little bit of gel pen for kind of highlight here and there. Uh, I'm just <laughs> really uh, not happy that this is really off center. I don't know why. I started with a head in the center and I didn't anticipate that this part is going to be a lot wider. So, well, it is what it is. Uh, this was uh, an idea for a project that I didn't actually use this idea for that project. I used something else. But so this is uh, kind of like a positive thinking uh, inspired um, scene. Now here. We have a study, a very detailed study, essentially, for what I would like to be a much larger watercolor and colored pencil drawing. So hopefully I'll get started on that sometime. And I really wanted to see how the colors interact together. And so I put a lot of effort in it, although I don't always put as much effort into my studies, but I knew that it will it was going to take me a long time to actually get to drawing this one. So I wanted my memory to stay kind of fixed in a drawing. So I have something clearly in my mind when I finally get to that drawing later on. And these are little thumbnail sketches for my next page. So I would also like to create this one in much larger size. So I'm thinking at least A3, that's four times this. And this I use watercolor. I don't think there's any colored pencils here. No. Uh, and I will change some colors. This this blue, I kind of changed my mind on that. It's, I'm going to make it probably some darker color. But essentially, I really like how this one turned out. Oh, yeah, there's color pencils. There's color pencils for the shading on the face, of course. I wouldn't be able to shade that um, smoothly with just watercolor. That's not really what I, I still don't know how to do that. These are some thumbnails for, uh, this one is coming up in the sketchbook. This one I haven't done. This is something I'm going to do on a actual watercolor paper. So here, um, so here we're still like, this is 2022, this is 2022 and the left hand side are all 2023. I'm not sure if that matters. I just kind of want to call it out how, how far we're prog progressing. So in 2023 and 2022, I actually started using the sketchbook more often because I said, you know, I, I have to fill it up. I have to complete it. I want to. And, you know, I, I stopped using all my other sketchbooks uh, except for my watercolor sketchbooks <laughs> so I could complete this one faster. And I thought I was going to do it in 2022, but it took me a whole another year to do that. So these here are sketches for a poster design that I did for a project. This is just a doodle with lots of different faces. And this was an idea that is not uh, completely original. I saw something else 
that was kind of in the shape of a skull. I think it was a book cover, but I can't remember what book, what illustrator. I I did not um, write it down. I just saw it like a, on a video for a short minute while my partner was watching some book reviews. But I really wanted to do then a, like a Dracula inspired. So this is uh, Castle Bran in Romania. And uh, the shape is obviously a vampire skull. So here are some more doodles for something that's coming up. And this is my, um, well, it's a drawing in and of itself, but it's also my uh, review drawing or actually my first, um, my first test of uh, Van Gogh watercolor pencils. So I use them entirely without anything else just to see if how it, how it looks when I complete an entire drawing with these watercolor pencils. I've tried uh, as many colors as I could fit in this. So the, the stained glass scene is actually <laughs> very good for that because you can just throw in lots of different things and lots of different shades of the same color. And I really like them. Uh, there is a video in my history where you can see the entire review. So I am quite pleased. They're not perfect. Um, no pencils are perfect, but I, I kept using them. And I think um, this one also turned out quite all right. So this one is from 2023. This one is from 2022. They're kind of rubbing together and transferring. And I don't like that, but I decided I'm going to be cool with it. You know, what happens, happens. Uh, so this one was just something what I was watching Star Trek and using watercolor paint and water soluble ink tense pencils. So one of the darker brown pencils. I do like trees. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a lot of trees in my artwork. So this is something where my mind goes, where I'm kind of half paying attention. And this is something. So um, it was actually kind of a dream. I don't know if it's a dream. It doesn't count as a dream if you're not actually sleeping, but if you're only lying in bed half awake. So half a dream, half a vision. I don't know. It's weird. So sometimes when I'm lying in bed, I'm, I see images in my mind. And sometimes these images are really good art ideas. And I did a couple of those in the past. And this is one of them. So the original vision did not have a figure inside. It was just this little pod, which was kind of faded blue and, and bright red. And so I just wanted to make it more interesting as a story and added a little humanoid, but kind of fishy character inside like an alien character on an alien world so I'm calling it um gestation this whole piece and I used watercolor gouache which here you don't really see the color of the gouache but what it does it creates this very misty atmosphere I do really like using gouache for that it kind of blends with the watercolor and all it does it creates this little kind of mist and I really like that effect. Uh, you, I can't achieve that with watercolor alone. And then there's a, lots of color pencil details, like on these little vines and and kind of little um, kind of vessels here on this uh, amniotic sac. It's a bit creepy, but you know, if you're watching my videos, then you probably know I like creepy art. And it's really interesting to kind of um, get images like that just in a dream. Now, these two pages, one of my favorites, well, actually this one, but this one was the first attempt. And here you can see some transfer from the ink, and I don't like that, but what can you do? So both of these are like dresses inspired by cathedrals. This one is just completely from just memory. Now, I didn't reference anything. It was just drawing random cathedrally window shapes. And this one, I actually... A reference from a photo of a cathedral in Cologne, one of the most famous Gothic cathedrals. And so it has a lots of little details that are quite faithful to the architecture. And I really, really like this one. Now, this one took a long time, but I really like it. And I don't know, maybe I'll do something else with it, some more cathedral fashion. Who knows? Oh, wouldn't it be interesting to have like an actual dress? shaped like a cathedral spires and and lots of transparent tall windows 
that would be uh, pretty cool. Not most practical to wear, but it would look awesome. So these, just some doodles with a fountain pen. There's a bit of glare here, but it's just eyeballs and, and people and faces. And this little ballerina has kind of a fish creature in her hands. These are water-soluble pencils, a fountain pen, and the background is painted using black gouache, which I like because it's very non-reflective, so it doesn't have any glare when you're scanning it or when you're filming it like this. So I do like my black gouache for this very, very matte finish. And there's another one here, kind of the same thing. This is snake is with ink tense pencils, perhaps some watercolor, I can't remember. Uh, this is brush pen and watercolor. And the black area is painted using black gouache. And the next couple of pages, so we're we're fully in 2023 here. Yeah, yeah, this is January 2023. This is all um, February 2023. So I took a class from Elisa Burke about a drawing expressive architecture because I draw kind of boring architecture. So I wanted to learn how to make it a bit more interesting. And this was one of the first one. So this is using a continuous line. So the entire drawing is kind of you try not to lift your pen, basically. I don't know. I probably did lift a pen maybe once or twice, but I did actually uh, try to do everything in one go uh, and then paint with very kind of bright colors. So I used a primary palette here. And this is reference from my a photo I, that I took in Malta. A very interesting looking building. And I would say that normally drawing this kind of architecture is very intimidating when it has lots of details. But when you take it like a more playful approach, like I'm going to draw it on the, in one continuous line, then it kind of stops being that intimidating. I don't know. There's something strange uh, that happens in my brain when I, when I take it as a kind of a very quirky exercise versus when I'm trying to portray it accurately. And then these pages are also uh, kind of based on what I saw on the course. But I don't remember what this was. This was probably some kind of a quick loose drawing technique. Now, if you can believe it, this is what I count as quick and loose. Uh, but I really did try to make it very quickly. So this is also a photo that I do took in Celle. They also have a very beautiful uh, castle, medieval castle there. Uh, if you have an opportunity to see it, I recommend it. So this is a brush pen and a bit of watercolor. I'm doing it kind of simplified, just adding a little bit of bright blue here to for the sky to pop. But I really like this very muted color palette for the castle itself. And this is also referenced on a photo that I took in Malta. And here I was kind of trying a no line drawing. So just using big painted surfaces and trying not to use any ink. So even these lines that you see, this is painted using watercolor. I think I used a dagger brush probably for that. And I also try to use brighter colors than I normally would. And it looks really great. And I would say the houses, the sandstone, it actually is very bright orange. So this is not like super exaggerated. This is maybe only slightly exaggerated because on camera, it also is a bit duller than is in life. But honestly, this, these buildings there with these very, very vibrant facades, uh, it's really cool. And of course, the blue doors, who doesn't like that? And this is the last from that series. Uh, I infor unfortunately don't know who the photographer is. I just found it online. It was not attached to any gallery or any name. And I don't know who the person is. I'm so sorry. But I really love the photo. And so I went to for, for also like a loose painting without any ink lines. And I use a very small brush. So there's lots of these little kind of wiggly textural strokes, which kind of look interesting. You know, it's not something I would normally do, but now that I'm looking at it, I actually like it a lot better than most of my uh, urban sketches or, or architectural drawings because uh, there is a bit of life in those lines, even though it's like a rookie mistake to use too small of a brush. But sometimes a small brush uh, can actually have a very interesting effect. 
Um, and this one is one of my favorite pages in the sketchbook because of these little cat ghosts. I don't know. Every time I see them, it makes my heart so happy. I, I can't look at them without smiling. And that's how I feel about these little buggers. They're, they're really, really cute. And I just wanted to have like a more storybook page because most of my drawings are very kind of, you know, white background. There's a character, fine. But here I wanted to do like a very, very um, immersive kind of atmospheric page. And I really think I achieved that. Although getting your watercolor this dark, especially on this paper, is really, really challenging. So that was a bit of a, that was a bit tricky. But I used watercolors and I used some colored pencils to kind of even out the shading. And I I really like these little, <laughs> these fellas are uh, painted using gouache. So... And there's a bit of, yeah, you can see that. You can see this is a little bit of silver watercolor. So, yeah, uh, I've called this um, five ghosts in a trench coat. Uh, so this one, uh, I don't know if you remember, but there was a thumbnail with the keys and the angel wings and so, so on. So uh, this, I decided to use metallic watercolors, gold and silver. Uh, to get this kind of mystical effect. And the rest is painted using watercolors and water soluble pencils and some regular pencils for the shading. And this, uh, I referenced it using my own hand. And this was not actually on my hand as I was drawing it. I took a photo of it. Uh, I found a dead dragonfly on the road. And then I took a couple of photos and then I put it on the ground and within like 15 minutes the ants were all over it and ate it completely like they devoured this poor dragonfly I was so sorry that I didn't put it somewhere else where I could have maybe taken a couple of more photos but you know it, nature does its thing and so this one also has a bit of a, a metallic details So um, this one uh, is a design from a couple of pages earlier where I was kind of playing with this Ouroboros. I don't know how we spell it in English. We call it Ouroboros. <laughs> so it's like a, it's got a rainbow. It's got a knot. I don't know. I think it's an interesting, might make an interesting tattoo. Let me know if you want to have this on your body <laughs> wouldn't be the first time uh, I always like getting people's photos um, when they get a tattoo of something of mine it's my one of my greatest love uh, life's pleasures this is a plant in my home very quickly I don't know maybe 10 minutes overall uh, brush pen and watercolor lots of drippy lots of splatter trying to kind of make my drawings less boring and I think I'm I'm getting there slowly uh, this one is inspired by a video lesson from uh, Willowing. So she's also on YouTube. Uh, great videos, great drawings. I really like her style. Uh, although, you know, this is maybe my, a bit more colorful, <laughs> a bit too colorful for my taste. But I really liked uh, the how she arranged these colors. And so I wanted to draw some poppies of my own because I love poppies and I do paint them often. And this is using watercolors and colored pencils. Maybe some water-soluble pencils. I can't remember. And this is another one of my plant-inspired plant uh, fairies. Uh, so this is these are thistles. I was painting thistles because I saw a tutorial that made it look very, very easy. And so I thought, okay, I should probably make some kind of fairy uh, with this little tiny, tiny thistles. And... This is watercolor and some colored pencils for, for face shading. And this might be one of my favorites. I know that it sounds like every page is one of my favorites, but it's not. I promise there's probably like five that I really, really are my favorites. Um, Quick kind of, I don't know what it is, a princess, a queen, some kind of a ruler drawing. And these are based on some photos that I took. In Slovenia, this is Bled, uh, this is uh, Castle, Snežnik, 
and I was using water soluble ink, fountain pen ink. So using a fountain pen, obviously. And I really like that. I started using that in my watercolor sketchbook uh, as well when I don't want to deal with color. It's a really, really quick way to make a very, very impactful drawing because there's shading, there's very, very deep shadows as well. So uh, it, it really works well. So these are some more uh, based on photos that I took, but adding a splash of color here and there. So this one sucks. So I did another one and I really like how this works. Uh, this is also using the same fountain pen ink. Uh, it's Rohrer and Klinga uh, Verdigri ink. If you're into fountain pen inks, I really like this kind of bluish green color and it's great for landscapes and uh, especially somewhere where there's a sea or foliage, it works really well. And this one is with a fountain pen, brush pen, and a bit of watercolor just for that negative space. And we're very near the end right now, just a couple more pages to go. So this is brush pens in red and black. And this is also, uh, actually, no, the background, the kind of faded pieces are uh, water soluble graphite. And then the black areas are using a black brush pen and a black fountain pen. And here, they're very, very quick sketches, doodles of dragonflies. And this is my other fan art piece. And this, the Borg Queen, uh, I was watching the entire Star Trek Voyager series. And then around the time when I drew this, uh, there was a last episode where Borg Queen was obviously a very prominent character. And I really like this form of hers without her body. And this drawing is called Perfection because this is how she considers herself. She thinks that her being disembodied is actually the perfect life form. And she's a very, very interesting character, very interesting design. Um, I don't really like all of the design of Star Trek, but her, I really dig. Now, these are some uh, blind contour drawings of a skull, uh, some thumbnails. This one I did in this sketchbook. This one I'm probably going to do somewhere else more skull studies using black and gray brush pen, but I use some uh, wet brush to dilute to create kind of more of these gradations. Uh, this is a book page glued in here and the story is actually about a bee. So I thought it would be fitting to actually draw a bee and it has a bit of that metallic watercolor too. Uh, these are just some swatches and then trying out some color combinations with fountain pen. Uh, this is the drawing from the earlier thumbnail. Uh, the entire background is painted this little kind of cream acrylic. Then I added a bit of stencil for this kind of ornaments and the everything else is water soluble pastel. Uh, it's not a reference from a photo. I, I use a little app uh, with kind of 3D head for, for light and shadow, but it's not an actual person. Some swatches. And this also started off from a painted background, like a gray acrylic background, stencil with this little ornament here, and then everything else is water soluble pastel. This is also not referenced by any... Um, it's not a real person, <laughs> it does not exist. And this here is actually a bit of a selfie. So it started off with some uh, collaged book pages, a bit of a gesso to kind of get a little bit of a surface that I can work on. And then I used a brush pen and water soluble pastels to color it. And there's a little bit of white gouache here. So this is actually based on a photo of me uh, that a uh, photographer friend took. And so that is it. Uh, we have just some swatches here and that's done. Okay. Well, thank you for patiently going through this entire sketchbook with me. I hope it was interesting. And yeah, I'm looking forward to working in any other sketchbook other than this, like, cause this was, wow, this took some time. Uh, hopefully uh, I will finish all my other sketchbooks much quicker that nothing like with this will happen again because really, people, use your sketchbooks. Don't put off using your fancy sketchbooks. 
you deserve using your fancy sketchbooks now, even if your art sucks, it doesn't matter. Start where you are. You know, my earlier art was kind of, eh, it wasn't really great. And look where we got, you know, it just takes time. It just takes time. And some drawings are going to suck. That's also fine. That's part of, you know, practicing drawing. So I hope that um, at least, if nothing else, this video inspires you to use your fancy sketchbooks, to enjoy your fancy sketchbooks, to make the best of them. Because you know what? There's always going to be more fancy sketchbooks that you can use once you finish this one. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in another video. Bye.